Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So yesterday when I left you guys, I started watching the latest episode of a TV series called Evil. And this latest episode was all about gaslighting truth. Now, this whole series is about gaslighting truth. But this particular episode gets very specific. Now, what is this all about? Well, you're going to hear him mention something that we're all familiar with. Let's pull this up and watch this first sequence here. Religious cults have been joined by political ones. Deprogramming. It has gotten harder in the last half decade. My guess is that most of you are here today because a family member has become absorbed in QAnon. Because a family member has become absorbed in QAnon. Because a family member has become absorbed in QAnon. Now, I remember when Barbecue and on and on and on came online years ago. And I think Barbecue is probably an appropriate pet name for the group. Given the fact that they've gaslighted truth. And I remember how many red flags were already up because of how quickly... The group gained traction on all the social media platforms with only very simple and basic versions of the already known disclosures that many of us tried and tried and tried to get airtime to spread the word to the entire world and none of it ever gained traction until barbecue and on and on and on came online. So that was my first red flag because they took some of the more sensational aspects that were very difficult to prove that we all know is probably really happening, but difficult to prove nonetheless. And they focused on that instead of some of the more definitive evidence that was out there that could have really made a difference in the truth community and could have won more people's hearts to understand that there's something going on. Now, in this episode of Evil, this guy plays some kind of, like, I don't know what you call these people. He's a deprogrammer of people that are in cults. But notice that the first cult he mentions is the one that the programmers themselves have come up with to discredit truth, which is the barbecue crowd. And... I want you to also notice that he looks familiar to you, or he should look familiar to you. This is the Trump archetype. The Trump look. Now, you're going to see that confirmed in a minute here. But another red flag that went up when the barbecue crowd came out were the politics of it all. The politics that was weaponized for only one side of the paradigm which was the right and that was a huge red flag because real truth goes beyond the right left paradigm because we understand that the right left paradigm was created by the controllers to create chaos so if you have someone claiming to know the truth but still choosing a side then you know it's not the truth and at the end of the day, truth should resonate with both sides of the aisle. There should be something relatable to both sides that they understand the deception. Whether or not they choose to understand it or believe it, that's on them. But let me give you an example. I talked to a liberal friend from many, many years ago that I used to work with in pharmaceutical sales former colleague and boy was she upset about Roe v. Wade she used to be this kind of hippie girl that you know kind of didn't like to talk about politics too much it's very kind and sweet and really never got into political discussions and it and she had completely changed into an angry liberal it's as if it didn't matter that Bo Jiven was president 
You'd think liberals would be really happy right now, wouldn't you? But they're not. I mean, the anger in her voice was palpable. Now, we talked for a bit. I told her I don't vote. I hadn't in many years, and that seemed to upset her. Even as I was conceding to her that there is no such thing as right and left. And because in my years that I knew her, I was very right-leaning in terms of I voted and everything. And she didn't like that back then, but she didn't say much about it. And so when I told her I didn't vote, she was more upset about that than me being right-leaning from those years past. Now, I said to her, how about that warmongering Bo Jivin? Who didn't stand up against the Supreme Court and acted just like Bush on the climate agenda. I have to admit, I was toying with her a bit, but I wanted to get her to think about the right-left paradigm. That Bo Jivin, who they all voted for, just to oppose Trump, was acting just like Trump would have acted. Oil, economy, and this you know conflict over there in the stew crane. I mean, you know, they talk about this climate agenda a lot, don't they? But look at what Bo Driving's doing. Now, eventually, they will enact their climate agenda. I'm not trying to say that Bo Driving's not going to, but notice their priorities and the hypocrisy of it all. They would rather put that on hold and go and wage war in a country that has they have nothing to do with, and it just reveals their own hypocrisy. Not to mention, the whole war machine is one big climate disaster on their terms. Now, I don't believe all of that, but according to their definitions, you've got tanks and vehicles and missiles and this is and that's and aircraft carriers, bunker fuel. The hypocrisy is glaring. Now, I told her that voting didn't matter. Now, we'll get back into this montage in a minute, but I'm just going to talk to you guys for a bit. I told her voting didn't matter and that both sides have failed us. And even after admitting there wasn't much difference between the candidates, because she did concede that, she was still mad at me because I backed out of the political process. So I just proved to her that the political process was a big joke, and she was mad at me because I didn't put my input in. Now, of course, this is cognitive dissonance. This is programming. And we're going to talk a lot about this on tomorrow's show. I'm very excited about tomorrow's show. Westworld, because it's all about the programming. And it goes a level deeper than any of us have ever talked about. It goes down to individual programs being run in our lives based on our programming. We'll break all that down tomorrow. But I think back to Barbecue Club and I see the hypocrisy just as clearly. You see, truth was already in the trenches even years before I came on the scene. I came on the scene about 2012, but truth had already been firmly established long even before YouTube. People writing books. But one thing that changed when YouTube hit the scene was mainstream truth. Mainstream truth in the form of A. Jones, A.J., you know what I'm talking about. And many of us saw how badly that damaged the truth community. We also saw other forms of mainstream truth arise. Some of them started out with good intentions, but then were co-opted quickly by the machine itself, steered in a different direction, that would then derail it. Everybody remembers the Nobody Ever Died Club, which heavily damaged the truth community. It became a joke and memes, and they made comedy out of something that was not very palpable to the people 
who saw the evidence. It was stomach turning for them. And that was all done on purpose. And that's why it was given steam. That's why it was given energy on this platform. It was a honey trap. Those channels went viral. Millions and millions of subscribers. Millions of views. So that people could see the insensitivity and be turned off by it. The Nobody Ever Died Club. Where are those channels now? Nowhere to be seen, are they? Why? Because they weaponized that to then censor us, didn't they? You see, there are rules to censorship. You can have opinions and thoughts. But if you start saying this is beyond the shadow of, of the fact of a doubt... That you know this for sure or that for sure or this is a fact or that's a fact. That's where they get you. And that's when the fact checkers come out, don't they? So all you got to do is tweak the format. You can still get the message out, but tweak the format. But instead, they were rewarded for saying nobody ever dies ever. It's all just fake. And when you say that, you let the people off the hook who are perpetrating real crimes because under the NDAA Act they're allowed to push propaganda and things that aren't real so if you're saying nothing ever happens and no crimes are ever committed then you're letting them off the hook it's one of the most sinister forms of gaslighting I think I've ever discovered that's why those channels were given free reign for a time. Now, both mainstream truth both of these types of mainstream truth, I should say, were allowed by the algorithms to get just big enough to be damaging. Just big enough to establish a recognizable crazy label for a fringe part of America. And then it was wep weaponized, as I said earlier, to take away our free speech. And the rest is history. Now, how do they do this? Well, their loophole is if you state things as facts, they can fact check you. Or if your speech is incendiary, where it spawns violence, they can shut you off. But notice how their own rule does not apply to them. All day long, a couple summers ago, the left was gaslighting Blam Tifa into violence to pretend to undermine Trump. And for some reason, that didn't matter to the algorithms. The left could run cover for Blam Tifa all day long. Let them burn wherever they wanted. Now I say they pretended to undermine Trump because all of this back and forth is pretend. And that part of it is pretend. They have to keep each other and each side angry. And that's how they maintain power. So why are we talking about all this? Well... The TV series Evil is at it again. Gaslighting truth. Just like the barbecue club and the other examples that I just gave. Truth has been co-opted. And the barbecue club will be resurrected for the next election to dissipate any reasonable and intelligible discourse to drown out the real truth. Now what is real truth? Well, real truth is outside the paradigm. It's outside of the back and forth and the emotion. Emotion based on I'm on this side or that side. Because emotion is okay. But when it's directed toward the Most High and His Son, like I get emotional about how hardly any people are waking up to all this and that they're stuck in the right-left paradigm. And that's because I see people just chasing their tail and not focusing on Jesus and listening to the words in the gospel and the New Testament, which clearly and plainly show you that 
the battle isn't between each other. It's between us and the serpent who rules this world. But people forget that. And you start believing in leaders who are right under the arm of the serpent. So. What else do we have here? So. Living in truth means that we recognize that those in power are all in one group. One group who is silently but meticulously marching us toward the electric electromagnetic prison you guys do you really think the speaker of the house is dumb enough to get hopped up on pills and booze in front of the world and try to form a complete sentence do you really think that these people are that dumb do we really think that america elected its first senile president of course not these acts are meant to enrage the other side to action what do you think the people on the right are doing right now? Oh, man, we got to get Pelosi out of office. Oh, man, Bo driving senile. We have to vote for Trump. Order out of chaos. We fall for it every time. You see, if people on our level didn't see a huge difference between the two sides, and I'm talking on an emotional level, I'm talking if Nancy Pelosi actually acted normal and Bo driving actually was normal, then people wouldn't be motivated to vote, would they? Of course not. So these people are acting. They're exaggerating and hyperbolizing their roles to keep you locked in the paradigm. And this is the, one of the hardest things I've ever had to try to explain to people. Because I can say it, I've said it a hundred times, but in order for you to fully understand it, it's very difficult for people to wrap their brain around it. The more extreme these actors get, the better. This is why Trump was so effective, because all he did was gaslight the left. And it hyped up his base. And they're like, yeah, stick it to him. I can't believe he said that about her. Wow, go get him. Finally, somebody who says it how it is. And it all feeds into the ego and all the things that are against what God represents and wants in your life. Those feelings of get them, get them, get them is not the fruitage of the Spirit. Now let's see what the TV series show Evil says about those who think outside of the mainstream narrative. Because again, they're gaslighting truth here by talking about the barbecue club which is the sticker that they've put on anybody who thinks outside of the box in the mainstream narrative. Look at this. Here's the proof that this guy is the Trump character. Here it says, cult interventions when enough is enough. We've all seen this before. Enough is enough. Notice the Vidco 19 spike proteins on this 1980s or 90s Illuminati playing card. Hmm. Interesting. Let's keep watching this here. Uh, Father Acosta. Very interesting talk, Doctor. Mm. The Yeshua people, um, it's new, it's caught on with some celebrities and new age folks. He sent me out on an intervention about a month ago. His girlfriend got him wrapped up in a cult upstate. They live in the woods, uh, talk about Jesus on earth, living and farming together. With deprogramming, you break down a subject's identity in order to build it up again. So as you just heard, the cult deprogrammer de guy uh, approaches them about one of his patients who he thinks is possessed. Now, I'm not going to show you that part, of course, but the trail leads the investigators to a place called the Yeshua cult. Of course, this is gaslighting the Son of God. But they're going to go to this cult and find out how this guy got possessed. 
So the people of Yeshua, a land with no locks, and they're having sunrise services tomorrow morning, and the public is welcome. Lily. People of Yeshua, poi, which is goy. Notice all the acrinodrome pink. Breathe in. Exhale the detritus. Serpentine. I mean, this is mockery on another level. Now, they're going to next depict, depict Yeshua as a new aged woman. Okay. You'll stay close to Yeshua. Yeshua wants us to know that reality is never just one thing, it is both love and science. Who's Renee? Yeshua's it earthly vessel. She's a friend of Ben. We were just talking about RSM fertility. So, if you just saw it there, I mean, this is this is what is now mainstream entertainment content now. Is this kind of mockery, okay? All wrapped into one. A woman, new age, which obviously is double mockery against the Son of God. Now, it's important for you to see this because you'll see how other people are being programmed against us. So you can understand when you get negative feedback or energy from people. When people call you, say that you're in a cult because you use Jesus' true name, Yeshua or Yahushua. Okay? And this is why, you know, people ask me, why don't you use Jesus' true name? Because Jesus transcends the name that you call him. Do we really think he's limited, limits our love based on our understanding of his name? Would he be that petty? He reaches into your heart. How do I know this? Well, think about all the different languages there are on the earth. What are they? Would they all know the Hebrew name of Jesus? Of course they don't. They would only see him in a vision. Many of these people have never even seen a Bible before. And Jesus would reveal himself to them. So by us getting hung up and arguing about it, now it's okay if you use the name and it's great. And I use it sometimes as well. But to sit as Christians and argue about his true name and condemn each other, our own brothers and sisters, based on whether we use it or not, is of the enemy. That's what the enemy wants because it continues to divide the body of Christ now, if someone is using it incorrectly or in vain, or they're using it for a new age cult, of course you call that out. But we should not be fighting over the name of Jesus. In fact, when he returns, the Bible says that all shall know his name. Which implies that many maybe didn't know his name. It will be made clear in the end. So... Understand that Jesus speaks to your heart. And all the people that prayed to Jesus, called out to him throughout the millennia, because that's what they understood his name to be, their prayers were answered too. And Jesus recognized them. He wouldn't simply not listen to them because they were using the incorrect name. So, let's get into the next part of this plot as this episode takes a twist. Because Kristen, which is this woman over here, you'll see her in a second, realizes that her daughter was born from a satanic embryo from a fertility clinic. And that it's being, her child named Lexi is being groomed to basically be the Antichrist. Watch. And the sigil map, this sigil here, that is the one your daughter is being groomed for. He is intent on putting your daughter on a demonic throne above the destroyed world. I'm sorry, what? It is a key sigil. Many rely on it as a leader. It matters more to us than 20 of the others. Guilt! Now, is there some truth to this? Well, I truly believe that the Antichrist will be a genetically modified human of some kind. Maybe part fallen angel. 
probably born synthetically on some level. So yes, I believe there is some truth to this. Now, let's get into this next part. Let me make sure you guys are with me, and then we'll get into this next part as we start to wind up the show here on the TV series Evil. Now, I keep repeating that because a lot of people ask me, what show is this from? And so rather than me putting that in the comments over and over again, I'll simply just keep repeating it during the show so people will know exactly what we're looking at here. Now, let's keep watching this because this next character, his name is Ben. And he's seduced by the Yeshua cult leader, the lady that you just saw earlier, into a guilt ritual. Which, of course, is more mockery to make us all look crazy. Let's watch this and I'll give you my thoughts on it. Guilt. 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 Okay, all right. Okay, everybody. Guilt. Hey, guys. So, why is this mockery? Well, obviously... This is a scene out of Midsommar, right? And they actually say that in, in the script here. I didn't include that part, but the, he says, Wow, what are you going to take me into a, a Midsommar room? Now, we we did a decode on Midsommar. I think I did it with uh, KJ from Scariest Movie Ever. We did like a group decode on that. And so if you haven't seen that, maybe I'll re-upload it or something. But that was a very dark film. I don't know if that's something we need to rehash again. But if you're interested, it is up on, I think, this channel here. But anyway, this is all mockery of our faith. Okay, Why? Because the Bible says we are all guilty of sin without Christ. We're born into sin. And this is true. But there's a salvation plan through belief in Him, isn't there? Now, some people don't like that. Oh, why should we have to believe in your God to be saved? Well, that's just the way it is. He's the son of God. He's the creator of the universe. You know, I mean, if you figure that out and you realize that, then you follow the salvation plan. It's the people who are defiant against that, who don't want to submit. Because the alternative is ego and self, isn't it? Which almost inevitably always leads to destruction. Because this world rewards aggression it rewards good looks, image, it rewards wealth, and it rewards hurting other people to get what you want. We've seen it over and over again. We see it play out over and over again in the news media. People hurting other people to get what they want, stepping on other people, competing with each other to get what they want, to be famous and popular and wealthy. And all those things are opposite of what Jesus represents. So, I'd rather wake up every day feeling a little guilty about my sins rather than how I'm going to screw somebody over today. I don't know about you guys. I guess people are wired differently. But it's always good to be a little self-critical, isn't it? So, here come the hyperboles. They basically sacrifice a goat for their sins. And then this guy's cup bends covered in goat blood as he becomes the scapegoat. He walks out of the cult ceremony covered in blood. Right. Okay, yeah. Hey, God. what happened? Huh, they killed a goat and they poured his blood over me. Why? Religion. This is religious cult. So, what is this about? Obviously, this is a throwback to the Old Testament because God had a specific testament, or not testament, but a specific covenant with a specific people who were elevated in the biblical timeline, right? To carry out a specific purpose. Look at the ancient Israelites as like the disciples. They had a higher calling. They were the seed line of the lion of the tribe of Judah. They were the seed line of Christ to come. It was like Terminator. And the enemy knew it. And he was hot on the heels of the Israelites. Trying to wipe them out. So Jesus could not be born. 
Now, for those that don't know, the ancient Israelite camps were laid out in the shape of a cross. They knew Jesus was coming. In fact, they were the ones who carried out the first Passover for their sins. The lamb, the blood on the doorposts, the same Passover that Jesus would continue. Of course the enemy knew. And this is why he was trying to wipe them out. Now I'm not trying to explain things for God, but if people just read their Bible, they would understand all of this. That because of this specific mission and this specific, you know, thing that they were the Israelites were there to do, they had tough rules. They had to atone for their sins in anticipation for the final atonement of sins, which was Jesus. Would Jesus' sacrifice have been as important if the Israelites weren't already making sacrifices for their sins? In other words, Jesus put an exclamation point on it. People ask, Casey, he was, he was crucified on a tree. Well, that could have been the case, but the tree had a cross member. It was shaped like a cross. What do you, whatever you want to call it, a crossbow, whatever. How do I know this? Because all you have to do is look at the number of Israelites encamped around the tabernacle. <clears throat> the tabernacle was at the center. And if you do the math, let me show that to you. Because this is the proof that Jesus was crucified on a cross. Israelite armies around the tabernacle. It's simple math. Simple math. By the numbers, you see that it forms a cross around the tabernacle. This would be the future place where Jesus would be crucified. Everything was pointing forward to him from the Old Testament. He was here in Judah. He was the lion of the tribe of Judah of the 74,600. Now, modern day, uh, real real, we'll call it, is not the same as these ancient real reels. Okay? That's the word I'm saying right here. Not the same. So I do not I do not support what is happening now with that whole thing. Just to be clear. Cuz that's different, I believe. So God had a specific covenant. He did things for a very specific reason to put an exclamation point on what his son would have to do because Jesus took on all of that sin into himself. And he became the sacrificial lamb. And the rest was history. So, notice how they gaslight that whole concept in these final scenes of this episode by basically hyperbolizing this. A guy covered with goat's blood, obviously, this is going to turn off even some of the most faithful Christians. We'll look at this and scratch their head and go, wow, God asked the Israelites to do this. Hmm, this is what the enemy wants to put a question mark in your mind. This is why we have to do these decodes to help people understand how the enemy is working constantly to chip away at your faith and putting ideas in the heads of people who normally would have been on the fence maybe about their faith or considering believing in God and they watch something like this and they go the complete opposite direction. So this was a very crazy series. I do not recommend watching this series in its entirety unless you have the very very thick armor of God and you're a soldier for God in fighting the enemy. Because that's about the only redeeming quality of the series is to fight the enemy and help to decode this stuff for the masses. But if you're not that, I would not recommend this series. Now, 
Tomorrow I have a special show on the latest episode of Westworld in which there is full EMF, we're going to start calling it G5 instead of the other word, G5 Tower Disclosure. It goes off the rails as the characters begin to wake up from their matrix. And it's really, they're talking about all of us waking up from this sleep, waking up from this dream, realizing that something is not right. So that will be tomorrow's show. Let me go in the chat for a little bit, see what you guys are up to. Yeah, most of you don't even watch TV anymore. And I wouldn't be watching it either if there weren't so many people still watching it that need to wake up. Because if they see one of these decodes, they're going to be able to wake up. Aren't they? They're going to be like, wow, I just watched that show. I had no idea all that stuff was hidden in that show. But he's right. He's connecting things from shows that shouldn't have things connected to them. Like the number 237. And all these other things. What does that really actually mean? Why do they keep writing that in their script? It must mean something more than they're telling us. And that's when the lights go on. That's when you realize you're being programmed. Right? And that's why we watch all this stuff and decode it. You know, it's crazy. I get criticized from my own brothers and sisters. Casey, enough. We don't want to decode your... What are you doing? Why do you spend all your time watching TV? That's the enemy talking. He wants to hide in the shadows and program at will. And so that nobody ever wakes up. He wants the world not to believe in God. Yet, all he does is keep talking about God, doesn't he? That's why we do this. Don't let anyone ever try to twist your arm and tell you that we're not doing God's work here because we are. A lot of people, and I'm not criticizing other parts of the body of Christ, but they stay stuck in one gear. They think that all that they're commissioned to do here is to be in the word every single day and be reading right out of the Bible and going over verses and not even relating it to what's happening right under our noses. And the very people in their pews are watching all these television programs and being programmed right to the enemy, undoing anything good that they're doing by opening the Bible. You have to have both. You have to have both. So, all right, I love you guys. Let's see what you guys are up to. Can be the lonely road at times. Yes, it can. Know thy enemy. Absolutely. Now, if all we did was expose the enemy and not relate the Bible back into it, then I could say some people might have a point. But the whole point of this is to relate it back to the Bible, as we did in today's show. Showed you the layout of the encampment of the Israelites. I showed you how they were gaslighting God and the Bible and His Son. So all of this is all about the Bible. All right. Hello, Georgie. The path is narrow. Absolutely. It's all distraction. Yes, entertainment media is distraction. And programming. It's actually the most effective form of programming that the enemy uses. Because he entertains people. He makes us bored in our lives, right? With our 9 to 5 jobs. And then he goes, okay, now I'll give them entertainment. And through the entertainment, he programs you to create chaos. Now we're going to go over some programming loops tomorrow that are happening in probably somebody in your life that is close to you. You may have even gone through one of these programming loops. And I'm going to explain it in detail from start to finish. An algorithm being run in your life or someone that you love's life. That keeps running over and over and over again. It's a program. And there are forces at work. Hiding beneath the surface. That are reinforcing these programs. To keep people stuck in them. What's the point? The point of these programs running in your life. Is to distract you. To also make you feel hopeless about the future. To put you in fear. So that you're more easily manipulated by the powers that be. That's the point of these programs. We're going to go over a couple of those tomorrow. We're going to go over the military programming. 
We're going to go over the marriage programming. And I look, marriage is good, but not the form of marriage that we have today under the beast. Beast marriage is different than the most high marriage. Okay. As I don't want people to go, oh, Casey's forbidding the mar the marrying of people. You know, no, that's not what we're doing here. Marriage is a great thing under God, but what we have today is not under God. It's something different. So, all right. What else do we have here? Someone mentioned secular music, playing that in your home. Look, music is another program. You guys, everybody's been going on and on and on about this song by Kate Bush. We did a lot of decodes on Kate Bush, didn't we? Back in the past. In fact, many of them got pulled down from YouTube. Or they were labeled as age inappropriate for simply decoding mainstream music. And now I see why. Because she would emerge as this Stranger Things, you know, song. It's like the, the, what do they call it? The flagship song. The soundtrack of Stranger Things. When you get, when you listen to that song, it gets stuck in your head. It's a program. And unless you can deprogram from it and understand the programming of higher being programmed, then you will be deceived by that. This is why songs get stuck in your head. They're designed to do that. To program you. So. Watch out for that stuff. And if you're playing this stuff in your home, understand it probably has some effect on you. I'm not going to tell you, condemn you for doing it. Obviously, we're watching secular TV shows, but we are it's all about the intent. What are you doing with it? Are you trying to expose it? Or are you reveling in it and believing the messaging inside of it? That's what it's about. Now, Kate Bush has a long history of evil right on its face. Music videos of people dancing around, smashing raw fruit with their feet, which dovetailed into another completely separate music video of the devil dancing on the skulls of people. So, here we are, this woman who's basically a self-promoted witch, I guess you could call I think she admits she is, like a white witch or something. Um, now becoming the soundtrack of Stranger Things, a children's movie series or TV series. Welcome to Backwards World. Welcome to Backwards World. Can you go over the banking system? Well, it's not one of my fortes. A lot of, a lot of people out there with really good work on the banking system. The current. Currency. It's all about the water. So, they're just open now with satanic themes. Absolutely quiet observer. Right into your unconscious, conscious mind. Yeah, Kate Bush was from like the 80s. Big 80s star. She's still trying to rock it now, but she got her big push from Stranger Things. All that was planned. All of it was planned. They wanted to bring her back out. That's why they smashed us when we started exposing her. She was a nobody up until, you know, a couple, t until this year. Everyone had forgotten about her. Except for us, we were exposing her. And they're like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't show her music videos, Dancing on Skulls and Fruit. Fruit is children, if you didn't know that by now. Have you heard of Columbus Labs? No, I've not heard of Columbus Labs. All right. Tori Amos was another one. They're good at what they do. Yep, they are effective. Can't take that away from them. But God is greater. But it's about... Exposing this stuff, exposing darkness. That if darkness is allowed to sit in obscurity and no one really understands, then darkness wins. 
God relies on us to expose the enemy. Yes, Metallica, the song that they also played in Stranger Things. Young people are picking that back up again. And these people work with these popular TV shows. They, they cut deals to reignite their careers and their, and their sales because it's all about money. Think about how much money Kate Butch is making right now. People are buying her tracks. Probably buying up all the music they can of her. Thinking there's another hit out there or something that makes them feel good. That's what's going on right now. This is how much power the enemy has in this reality. But God always wins. He will win. He's already won. Yes, the fruit of the womb, warrior for truth. All right. Indoctrinating a new generation. And they just keep recycling the stuff. You know, if they had someone that was effective in past generations at, you know, deceiving people, they'll sometimes brush those people off, dust them off, and parade them right back out. This is what they do. So, all right, you guys, we'll be back on here tomorrow with Westworld. <laughs> but let me give you a sneak peek. This is crazy. Actually, I think I pulled that down. Uh, um, you can see the thumbnail for tomorrow's show. That says it all right there. The tower is the serpent hiding in plain sight. Now, brother, I think his name was Joe, was the one that discovered that the serpent next to the tower in Westworld looks almost identical. So I got to give credit to where credit is due. And we'll discuss all that tomorrow. I love each and every one of you. Take care and be saved if you haven't already. Have a great day.